we have much more of inviting and aligning and attuning rather than imposing. That's what is my passion to serve. Hello, I'm Dr. Jude Curravan. I'm a cosmologist, a planetary healer, an author of latterly two books, The Cosmic Hologram and The Story of Gaia. Previously, I was an international businesswoman and I'm also the co-founder of Whole World View. I don't know. I actually don't know and I don't feel that anybody knows. It's rather like if you're a three-year-old child and you're at the, the, the gates of the school for the first time, however excited you might be or frightened or whatever it may be, you don't know. What I do feel is that this paradigm shift is enabling us, empowering us, inspiring us to remember that we literally are inseparable from the whole world. Whereas we've actually had a worldview primarily until now of one in materialism and separation. When we transform those worldviews, we see the world, we experience the world through completely different lenses. If that's the case, if our worldview instead of separation is one of unity and wholeness, what does that mean in the way we, we choose, the way we decide, the way we behave? I don't know, but I'm incredibly excited and optimistic. The choices we've made from a worldview that is based on materialism and separation, the natural outcomes of those, the natural behaviours of those, are behaviours of conflicts, of inequalities, of injustices, of treating each other and our planetary home, Gaia, as expendable, as somehow different and separate from ourselves. And that is a dis-ease, that literally is a fragmentation of our personal and collective psyche. For me, when we heal our awareness into wholeness, we treat each other and ourselves in much more of a compassionate, and a compassionate, loving way. If conflict is the natural outcome of a world of separation, then peace is a natural outcome of a world of wholeness. If fear is a natural outcome of a world of separation, then love is a natural, not just an outcome, but a natural way of being, of, a whole, of, of us realizing that we are microcosms, co-creators of a whole world. We are her children. You know, Gaia has, in fact, our entire universe since its first moment of space and time, 13.8 billion years ago, as an innately living entity, has evolved from simplicity to complexity, ever greater levels of individuation and self-awareness. Four and a half billion years ago, our planetary home Gaia came into being. Since she came into being, she became a planetary mother to the biological organisms that began with single cells, then continued into the complexity, to now, to us. And at each leap of complexity, there was cooperation. So who we are, are microcosmic co-creators of our entire universe, children until now of our planetary home Gaia, but surely now it's time for us to grow up, to consciously evolve, to remember who we really are, and to become her co-evolutionary partners. But we can only do that if we heal that rela our relations with ourselves, each other, and her. And that's what the evidence is showing us we are now able to do. I don't tend to use the word spirituality, although I have no issue with it per se, but as someone who, who, who feels the evidence of wholeness is so powerful that converges the science with what has been known as spirituality, but I prefer to call universal wisdom teachings, into a unified understanding of the nature of reality, 
I don't choose to use any word that sort of continues that separation. And sometimes we talk about mind, body and spirit as if somehow they're separate. And yet, as my dear friend Elizabeth Sartoris, the evolutionary biologist, said, consciousness is like a piano keyboard. You know, with the lowest notes being essentially the physicalized manifestation of who we are through emotional, mental, spiritual, but they're all parts of the keyboard. So if we understand that, then we understand that we have access to all those levels of awareness, all that multidimensional grandeur of the wholeness of who we really are and the wholeness of our universe, our planetary, home Gaia, and literally the whole world. A topic that's really important for me, not just now, but all the way through my own journey, is to ask, what if, what then? So in other words, if we now see that the evidence of wholeness, of unity, not unity in uniformity, but unity in radical diversity, that unity is the, is the, is the existential reality of, of who we are and what the whole world is, what does that mean? So for me, what's alive in me at the moment is that what does it mean? What now? What do we choose? How can we come together through this lens of unity and diversity, but even beyond diversity, beyond inclusion, unity and belonging, to remember we belong to the whole world. What does that mean in, in how we educate? What does it mean in the, in the type of economics we have? What does it mean in terms of unity of justice? What does it mean in terms of unity of eco-governance? All of these, these, these emphases, these different ways of behaving and different aspects of our lives, when you put unity in front of them, it turns them on their head in terms of how you approach them, how you behave with them, how we behave with each other in co-creating them. And instead of old hierarchies of the old paradigm, instead of the predominance of what I'd call a masculine approach, we have much more of a balanced masculine feminine. We have much more of multi-level holarchies. We have much more of co-creativity. We have much more of inviting and aligning and attuning rather than imposing. That's what is my passion to serve as the potential for us in this incredible time of, of possible transformation and I would say possible conscious evolution. Mm -hmm.